Hi everybody. Right, today I'm going to talk to you about steering racks. Um, in front here on the vice I have a very grotty, um, very grotty steering rack here, um, which I'm going to take apart in front of you, just to show you what goes into them. I've already taken off the track rods, or what you know, Americans call tie rods, um, and they go on there, on the end here, and I'm just going to quickly show you that first. Now this is obviously the pinion end. Now inside the end of the rod is a recess with um, which contains a little tiny spring, hope you can see that, and a little dimpled, uh, I don't know what you'd call it really, anyway this puts some pressure on the, uh, on the ball of the uh, track rod. Anyway, here we go. Okay, um, after putting in the little spring and a uh, pushter, little shoe, let's call it a shoe. After putting in the spring and the shoe, now goes on the locking collar. And the locking collar has two flats so that you can get hold of it. Um, and this is the longer one which goes on the pinion side and this is what actually the pinion fetches up against when you turn to your full lock. And in fact on the earlier cars uh, this was shorter. Um, I don't know this for certain but I'm pretty sure it would have matched that which is the one from the uh, uh, passenger side. So that's what uh, was changed to stop you uh, hitting your wheel up against the anti-roll bar when you turn to full lock left. Anyway, let's put that on. Um, wrong way up. That's like so. And then you have your tie rod, or track rod, which looks like that. And then you have a completely smooth circular collar that's uh, threaded at one end and you put the threaded end towards the ball, you'll see what that, and you'll see there, hopefully you can see that, there's a little cut in there. Now that's actually not in the original piece. Um, you actually drill that. Now, and this is what they, what they do when they refurbish a rack or when they originally built it. You've got your spring, you've got your little shoe, uh, you put some more grease in it, and then this gets threaded on, he says, there we go, and You thread it up to the point where you start compressing the spring and that gives you your pre-tension on the track rod and when everything's nice and tight it should be smooth and easy to move but it stays wherever you put it. Now you'll note there, are, there, is no, there are no flats on, the, on this uh, circular collar here. So what they do, what you have to do is you have to put that in the vise and then do up the collar. But crucially you lock them together and then that little groove which lives, let me take that back off again, there, was actually made because after locking it up you actually have to drill through the, um, the joint and peen a small piece of steel bar into place and that's what the groove on both sides was originally made by and of course now it's not going to line up the next time it goes back together, that's what it would originally have looked like and now it's going to be somewhere like that and we'll probably pick a completely new space to drill a hole and, and lock it together. Uh, but that's how they were locked together. Now, out comes your little shoe and your little spring, which when I took it out earlier it was so grotty it pinged off somewhere in the garage. It took me ages to find it. Anyway, there's a little spring and a little shoe. Now I want to uh, take apart the pinion housing. Um, oh, I haven't got this very centred very well on the camera, but uh, let's see how I can do. Two 10mm bolts on both of them, I don't know what state this is going to be in, to undo. This uh, car definitely stood in water for some time. The ins what came out of the steering rack when I pulled the boots off was uh, <coughs> distinctly, distinctly muddy coloured and uh, quite delightful. And this rack was actually rejected by the uh, company that I usually use to remanufacture racks. So uh, I'm pulling it apart myself to see if it really is destroyed or whether they just took one look at what was inside and said, not a chance. That's all right, I've actually got another rack spare. The only thing I really needed was the track rods. Okay, now, oh yeah, you see what it's like under there? Now on our cover plate, 
Now, because this is the cover, this is the, uh, let me pull this out actually, there's another spring here, and then another shoe, which you easy to take off with some circlip pliers. Oh. There we go, now that actually pushes down onto the rack bar, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, you see the profile there, hopefully you can. And that's what sets the pretension between in the meshing of the gears. And if you've got uh, play in your steering, um, it can be that or something else, which I'll come to in a minute. Now, almost forgot, the way the tension is actually set on this thing is by these shims. I'm going to attempt to take one off. There you go. This one only has one shim on it. And there we go. So basically, if you remove one of these shims, the plate then goes down a little bit further and pushes a little bit harder. So you can take out play in your steering by removing these shims. Um, but you've got to be careful because uh, the, the steering tends to wear just in the middle more and less to the outside. So uh, you've got to be careful you don't go so far that it becomes really tight when you get to full lock. Anyway, there's that cover. Now we have a similar cover. Cool. Oh, stay of that. Oh, delightful. Although, having been full of grease and oil, actually the threads are okay. Not like a chassis bolt where you've uh, never had any oil anywhere near it, and that's just a one solid lump of metal by now. Anyway, that one out, the other one. These ratchet spanners, or wrenches, are absolutely wonderful. It's the ones with the wobbly heads that I've got here, and uh, there are a couple of jobs on the car which I would not be without one of these for. Anyway, back to the plot. I'm now going to remove this plate. Oh, look at that gunge coming off. Delightful. Um, there's also a paper gasket under these things if they've never been apart before, and it looks like this certainly hasn't. And now this one actually has a little lip seal in it, which uh, is obviously full of crap, but uh, can you see the lip seal in there? Covered in gum, very much like a uh, rear main on, a, on the engine or front main, just simple lip seal. Now for the interesting stuff, I've got filthy dirty hands now. Um, here is the base of one of the two bearings. Can I be lucky? No. Let's try it this way. Now I'm being careful not to grab hold of the pinion on the splined part. And uh, where's my hammer? Yep, she's out. Now, check out all those balls in there, open to whatever's inside the rack. Bloody awful design. And uh, that's possibly about as far as we need go here, really. But, because there's an uh, identical bearing on the other side. Um, you can actually see the rack there. If I uh, turn it back as a forward, you see it going in and out. Anyway. That pinion's got to come out now, but I suspect that the inner race on the opposite side is rusted solid to the shaft, which means it can't come past the rack. Um, I'll have another crack at that in a minute. Anyway, I forgot to show you the identical types of shims underneath the um, pinion housing, pinion plates. Now, this one actually, this is off the other rack, didn't actually have any on it. Uh, but once you see the pinion and the rack, you'll understand why the uh, why you need to shim it in two different directions. When you might think that the the rack just has left to right forces on it, uh, this is actually not the case. Um, you have uh, forwards and backwards forces on it as well, because it's a helical cut gear and. I did measure these once, but I can't remember exactly what they are. Uh, 45 degrees or something. But uh, and then we have 
the rack itself, which meshes with it at the angle that we're all familiar with. It actually looks like that. So when you turn your steering wheel left to right, because the gears are cut, because the teeth on the pinion are cut at probably 45 degrees, couldn't swear to that at the moment, um, you actually get forces wanting to move it like, like so. So you actually need to not only restrain the pinion that way, but you also need to restrain the pinion that way. Um, so that's radial, which is radius of the pinion shaft, and then axial, which is along the axis of the pinion shaft. So, now I wanted to show you the disassembled pinion housing of a much better condition steering rack. And I want to show you inside here, this is one of my bearings. Now I've never liked these open bearings because you're just, the, whole, the whole thing is basically designed to hold oil um, but as soon as you have a failure of a steering rack boot, uh, all the oil pees out and those poor open bearings, which are under quite a lot of strain, get, well, they lose their lubrication. The, bottom, the top one in particular loses its lubrication because the blooming thing points upwards. So the oil pulls at the bottom um, and the top one never gets any oil. So it struck me as being uh, the ideal solution would be to um, fit sealed bearings. Unfortunately, uh, nobody really does 45 degree axial and radial bearings, which is what we have on the original. I've got a, so I've actually got an inner and outer race here to show you. And can you see how the bearing would actually, ooh, there we go. You can see where the balls actually run in there. It moved radial axial loading. So as an experiment, I've gone out and bought some uh, what are called deep groove single row bearings, ball bearings, um, where the balls are deliberately recessed into a deep groove because the, so the bearing is designed to take axial as well as radial loads. Now the snag with the DeLorean um, steering rack bearings is that for reasons best known to themselves, now it is off the top of my head if I remember correctly, the inside diameter of the, or the outside, the diameter of the pinion shaft the hole in the middle there is three eighths. The outside diameter is 40 millimeters. So you've got an inside imperial outside metric, which is daft. Also, the, the uh, pinion assembly, the original Lotus pinion assembly, I, hold, I would love to hold it with some balls in, but it's a real pain getting them to all stay put, looks something like that. In other words, the inner race actually sits proud on one side and crucially, because this is up against the flat face, nothing can come can protrude out of this side. So what I had done, I just got a 40 millimeter outside diameter bearings and I actually had them machined down the inside face here, just a whisker by about a tenth of a millimeter, just to give me some clearance. And I had a little insert made such that it brings up my in a race to the correct depth and also gives me the 3 8 diameter that I need. And inside here is one that I've already put in. Now some people might ask if they've had experience of this, how on earth did I get the outer, the outer race out of the bottom there? It was actually surprisingly easy, um, simply by using um, some long pointy circuit, circlet pliers. And it came out in about 10 seconds. Very, very surprised about that. Anyway. So here we go with my new steering rack. I'm just going to put the pinion in for you. Um, I'm going to wipe my hands. Uh, so let's get the let's get the insert in. Oh yes, and to put the bearing in, um, I actually used one of the original outer races upside down and was able to knock it in with a hammer. Uh, pressing just on the outside race and it was quite a tight fit. So there we go. There's our new inner race And I have already assembled this I know it's pretty nice and now for the uh, Just got to make sure that the the low side is on the up above side there same thing there and there And I like to give it just a little 
and they can feel it walking in. Oh yeah, that just went in. Yep, that went home. That is now solid as a rock, beautifully smooth. And over behind me, I had water jet cut, a whole bunch of shims. So I can now build this back up again and give it just enough preload that it doesn't come loose and not enough preload that it causes the bearings to go tight because that would really make your steering stiff and shorten the life of your bearings no end. So uh, I'm now going to uh, put the cap on and do that back up again. But basically, uh, and then of course I've got the same to do on the other side with uh, some other shims that have appropriately sized that I've had made. They're stainless steel by the way. So let's put that together. Beautiful. Lovely and slick. And absolutely no play in either direction. But a lovely slick feeling bearing there. Right, one other little thing I wanted to show you is in the end of the, uh, on the passenger side end of the steering rack we have a plastic bush which you can see here is white. This is actually not original, this has definitely been done at some point because the original is black nylon and slots into those two little uh, indentations you see there and there are actually two little circular sort of clips here which for it to click into and this is very definitely not original because the original one had a, has, a, has a series of grooves running through it so the oil can get past this uh, this bush and if you find that you've got a really bad rattling coming from the uh, passenger side of your car and you can feel it really badly through the steering wheel chances are this bush has failed which they do regularly um, in fact let's have a look in the end of this horrible one here see what state this one's in um, well it's definitely present apart from being filthy dirty I can't actually see it so um, can't actually show you anything there, but anyway, yeah, that's the bit that needs replacing if you ever get really bad rattling on your passenger side steering. It's actually fairly harmless, but it feels blooming dreadful, and of course it's going to not do, much, do your tyre wear much good. Okay, so I've now got the rack bar in place. Nice and smooth, and no axial play in the pinion whatsoever, but of course, loads of slop in the rack itself, because I haven't put the... Uh, the other, it's a pretensioner on its sliding shoe. So let's do that now. And this is accessible actually when it's in the car. Isn't that pretty? Okay, I haven't actually cleaned this up very much yet. So, uh, oh yeah, and of course when you put the rack in, uh, absolutely drown it in grease. So, there we go, that's our little doodah which rides on top of the, top of the rack bar. In you go, it's a fairly tight fit. Then we get the spring, and uh, this one came off with one shim, and I think I'm going to remove that shim and, and, and leave it at that. Uh, we'll see what it's like anyway with the with the plate on. So here we go, that's with the cover plate. And lots of plate. I think that the actual the, the most plain steering is actually caused by the axial shims rather than the radial ones. So uh, let's see what this results. That's better. That will do, I think. Now I'm just going to put the track rods back on.